Thank you very much. Um, I was going to say that I will provide an introduction to the overall theme of our side event tonight, but I think we just had a very nice introduction and a very illustrative one, probably a lot better than what I can say because it's really based on hands-on experience. So what I will try to do is put what we have heard into a more general context. And um, I would like to start with a few facts. Many of you probably already know this. Forests cover one third of the Earth's surface. At the same time, there are about 1.6 billion, and this is an estimation, of people who depend on forests for their livelihoods. Deforestation continues, still at a fairly high rate of 13 million hectares per year. And the main cause of deforestation is conversion to agriculture. So we have a conflict there. We have forest-dependent people on the one side who need forests for food security, and we have forest deforestation to gain grounds for agriculture on the other side. We believe that food security needs both forests and agriculture. Now, at the landscape level, forests, trees, and family farms together form productive agro-agricultural agro systems. Their combination ensures essential ecological functions and services of the ecosystems. They provide a range of products and subs for subsistence and for markets. They increase resilience and facilitate adaptation to climate change, and they increase food security and nutrition. <laughs> the ecosystem services that are provided by forests underpin food security because the ecosystem services support sustainable agricultural production. They stabilize agricultural systems. Forests protect water and soil resources, they assist with soil development and fertility. They regulate climate. They provide habitat for wild pollinators and the predators of agricultural pests. And they are storehouses of biodiversity. About 80% of terrestrial biodiversity is found in forests. In addition, you know mangroves, river and forests. They are very important habitats. They provide food and protect fish and therefore also support fisheries. Next one. Then there are foods, fuel, fodder, and income provided by forests. There's a, there's a wide range of wild foods ranging from leaves, seeds, nuts, honey, fruits, mushrooms, insects, and wild animals that have been important for rural diets, diets for millions of years. Millions of years, not thousands of years, sorry. They also provide a source of income for rural people, especially for women in the rural areas. And forests provide fodder for domestic animals and fuel wood to cook food. About one third of the world's population cooks with fuel wood. And so that's a very, contrib very important contribution to food security that is often not recognized. <laughs> The foods from the forest provide usually important nutrient-rich supplements. They're not the main staples, but they're very important supplements because they provide protein in the case of wild animals, and they provide minerals and vitamins in the case of leaves, nuts, seeds, and so on. They often form a small but very critical part of the diets that tend to be usually bland and not very well balanced. And they serve as safety nets in periods of crisis or periods of food scarcity. That's all. Now, family farmers know this, and they integrate forests and farms for food security, nutrition, and their own livelihoods. Because many forest-dependent peoples are also small-scale family farmers, and often they're among the poorest, and they are important producers of both food and forest products. On the picture here, you see a couple in Vietnam. They are family farmers, and together they grow over 40 forest and farm products on their farm. Next one. 
So we need to challenge some of our past and current approaches in forestry and agriculture. What happens is that sectoral approaches are still very dominant and that has implications. It leads, for example, to quite a fragmented support to farmers. I remember when I was a young forester going, visiting farms and talking to the people there, and they always complained about the extensionists who came to visit them to give advice. The forestry extensionist came last week and told them one thing, and the agricultural extensionist was there the day before and told them something completely different. So there's a lot of fragmentation there. Then the, the contributions of the rather complex landscape mosaics of forests and farms to food security and nutrition are usually not recognized and they're undervalued. And this also results in difficulties for smallholders um, to get access to credit, markets, insurance, and extension. And indigenous peoples, forest-dependent communities, and family farmers are very often not included in planning and policy making on forests and food security and nutrition. Next one. So we need to combine forces and cross boundaries. And that means combining products and services of farms, agroforestry, and forests, which will increase food security, nutrition, and sustainable management. And we need to help producers to organize into producer organizations, which will add value to livelihoods and will enhance their policy engagement. And here on this picture, you see uh, one of the meetings of the Kambala Village Development Committee in Myanmar that has been recently formed, where the village members discuss planning for the marketing of their forest and farm products. The Forest and Farm Facility, a multi-donor funded partnership of FAO, IUCN, and the International Institute for Environment and Development, the IIED, is putting this landscape approach into praxis. By supporting small-scale forest and farm producer organizations and promoting intersectoral platforms with the ultimate aim to improve livelihoods, food security, and nutrition. If you wish to have more information on the forest and farm facility, you will find lots of it outside on the table, and you can also speak to our colleagues who are working, Jeff Campbell, of course, and also Sophie and Johnny. So I want to leave you with some key messages. First one is cross-sectoral planning and investment linking forests and farms is important. We need to get away from the sectoral approach and is develop better linkages between sectors. And I know this has been said a lot and it has to be said again because it is important. We need to strengthen and engage producer organizations, especially of women, for better policies and also for better livelihoods. We need to improve the understanding of food security and nutrition at the landscape level, and we need to learn to value its complexity. And we need to improve access to credit, markets, insurance, and extension for smallholders. Thank you very much. <laughs>